Pizza Flix presents Classic Movie Monday. My son hasn't arrived yet. No, he hasn't come in yet. Is he on the warpath again? Well, I wouldn't blame him if he was on the warpath. Now, if my son did a thing like... Why, Martha Stone. Well, of course. Uh, I haven't a son, but if I did have, and he spent all of his time running around at nightclubs and came to work every day at noon, I'd be on the warpath, too. Not yet, Mr. Thomas. Perhaps, uh, well, uh, perhaps there's a... Uh... ...with its office for a long while. This business must receive attention, even though my son doesn't think so. Yes, I know, but, uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, yes. but, uh... Well, what's the bad news? 820, sir. 820. Just keep the change. All right, thank you. This business has been in existence for nearly a century. My father handed it to me as his father handed it to him. But I'm not going to make the mistake of giving it to Lawrence until he proves he can conduct it. Good morning, Miss Perry. Good morning. Uh, have you any idea how my father is this morning? Have you seen him? Well, he seems a little annoyed this morning. Still annoyed? Huh? Well, I better leave town, I guess. <laughs> I'll be ready in a minute. He'll know what punctuality really means. He'll realize that he must work for a living and have duties that he can neglect. Just as soon as he comes in, Mr. Thomas.
Good morning, Miss Thorpe. And what are you laughing at? Oh, I know. Dad wants to see me. Oh, good morning, Dad. Uh, everything seems a little slow around here this morning. Of course. We should have a floor show and a jazz band. That's what a law office needs. Now, you listen to me, young man. I... <laughs> well, young man, what have you to say for yourself this time? Well, Dad, uh, no more of your excuses. Now you listen to me. I can't discharge you. You're my partner. But I can dissolve the partnership, and I'm going to do it. Oh, Dad, you don't understand. I understand enough to know that there's not room here for a playboy. I understand that you've given eight years to the study of law and not one hour to practicing it. But what can I expect? You have too many social engagements. Well, Dad, I, I, I couldn't help it. The fraternity gave a little party last night. That's what I hear every morning. You couldn't help it. Well, if you can't, I will. You're going to work. And work hard. You're going to know what it means to get to the office at 9 o'clock in the morning and leave at 6 at night so tired you can't get about. Well, Dad, it won't happen again. You're honest. quite correct. It certainly won't. Here, Lawrence, read that. I'm sure it'll interest you. And request you to call this office immediately to receive your appointment. T.J. Harrison, District Attorney, Peake County. <laughs> well, what does this mean? Just what it says. You're to be appointed Assistant District Attorney. Assistant District Attorney. It's taken influence and lots of it. But Tom Harrison was an old classmate of mine and he's agreed to make you one of his assistants. You'll start at the bottom and stand on your own. Your salary will be $2,500 a year. But, but, Dad, I can't live on $50 a week. Not the way you've been living. You've spent that much in one night. But until you give up that sort of thing, you can expect no further help from me. Oh, now, look here. I, I don't want to be disobedient, but... Well, I just... I can't accept this appointment. It's silly. You know that. Thomas, I'm appointing you to this job not for your father, but rather because of him. He's a fine man and a good lawyer. And any son of his comes in the right stock. I believe you're the kind of man we need around here. This office has been subjected to much criticism. The newspapers, the reform organizations, are relentless in their criticism. They claim certain organized criminal bodies are free from prosecution. I do believe there's something wrong here in this office, but I can't locate it. Someone is protecting dangerous criminals. So I've decided to shake up my staff, reassign positions until I find out. Oh, come in, Hill. You uh, sent for me, Mr. Harrison? Yes, I want you to meet Mr. Thomas. Thomas, this is Arthur Hill. How do you do, Mr. Hill? Not uh, Lawrence Thomas. I'm sorry, I think you'll have to give me my full title, Larry Thomas, Jr. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard a great deal about you, and I'm awfully glad to know you. I hope you're not going to prosecute me. Uh, Mr. Thomas is coming into the office. Hill, you know what the papers have been saying about us. While I'm not blaming anyone in particular, I'm going to ask you to turn over those gambling and vice complaints to Mr. Thomas. Harrison, I, I've worked awfully hard on this. And now, just as things are within my grasp, I, I can't give it up. I realize how you feel, Arthur. It's not me alone. I merely serve the public. They're not interested in our problem, our obstacles. They want results. Hard as it is, that's the way it must stand. These things are difficult to understand, more difficult to do, but I'm left no choice. It's up to me to answer, and I hope this is a solution. Well, I want to congratulate you. Thanks. I'm sorry it had to be you, old boy. Oh, that's all right, Thomas. 
were not you, it would be someone else. My files are in my office, if you would care to look at them. Please. Thanks, Jason. I mean, Mr. Harrison. <laughs> Thinking again, huh? Don't you know that thinking has killed more people than bullets? <laughs> well, how is the best little society reporter in town? I, uh, I don't know, but I'll, I'll ask her when she comes in. But I thought you were. Now, never mind that. What I want to know is, what brings one of our most prominent legal lights to a cheap newspaper office? To be perfectly truthful with you, my lady, I came to make an engagement with you. My, my, you overwhelm me. I'm all a flutter. You see, I haven't been out with you since, well, uh, since the night before last. At least. But tonight we celebrate. Celebrate? Mm hmm That's what we do five nights in a week, isn't it? We still have a new suit, or uh, somebody complimented you on the way you wear your hair, or <laughs> you, um, you found a manicure who gives your nails just the right polish. Celebrate. Say, you're Mr. Celebration himself. Oh, but tonight we have a real party. My dear young lady, do you realize that you're speaking to the assistant district attorney? No. Absolutely. You mean... I, I can't tell you anything about it now. I haven't the time. Drop by for me in your car at 7 o'clock and I'll tell you everything. And in the meantime, it's not for publication. The announcement will be made in the morning. Bye-bye. Oh. Yes, it's going to be great. Me standing before a jury, making an impassioned plea, trying to send some poor peddler to jail who hasn't made enough money to pay for a license. Don't be childish. You handle important cases, too. Remember that, young lady, and conduct yourself accordingly. Hear that? The strong arm of the law is some poor, unsuspecting driver. Just as it should be. We representatives of the law must protect our citizens. A hurry. Who? Me? Yes, you. Now, who did you think he meant? Your Aunt Agatha? This is very embarrassing, isn't it, dear? I, I, I've never been arrested. I don't know. What do you mean by going 50 miles an hour in traffic? I suppose you're going to know we weren't, but uh, you know that's not a bad idea. Never mind the wise cracks. Let me see your license. Oh, oh yes, the license. Uh, driver's license. Oh, you see, sir, I didn't know who you were. I suppose you fellows will learn not to meddle with men when they're on official business. You know, sir, I was only doing what I'm supposed to do. Well, uh, run along now and don't let it happen again. Oh, officer, just a minute. Oh, let him go. You just talk yourself into a ticket. Oh, that's all right, dear. Uh, look here. Uh, duty is duty, isn't it? Yes, sir. And uh, the law is the law. That's right. And it's your duty to uphold the law. Yes, sir. Regardless of who breaks it. That's right. Well, uh... Duty is duty. Yes, sir. Young lady, I'll have to see your driver's license. Well, you must be crazy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes. If anybody wants me, I'll be in my office. Very well, sir. Kit, this is what you call going to town. We shouldn't have come here. Well, why not? This is life. In the hall. I know you won't like this place. You're going there. <laughs> I think it's great. Now, look here. If you're born with the nice places in the town, if you say, well, we could, we could go to a movie. Well, let's get out of here. No, no, dear. Now, I'm here to see that they do right by my couple. Oh, come on, dear. Let's get into the spirit of the thing. We'll have... Hello, sweetheart. Isn't society to report a little out of her territory? Well, perhaps. <laughs> oh, I know. Visiting fireman wants to see how the other half lives. Now, if the gentleman will excuse us, you and I can... Uh... No offense, Governor. Oh, Mr. Wilson, do you know Mr. Larry Thomas? Larry, this is Al Wilson. You know Mr. Wilson writes a column on our paper? And tells tales on the radio. How do you do, Mr. Wilson? It seems to me I remember... Larry Thomas. Say, listen, don't get sore about that little story I wrote last week. You see, I was a little jealous, because I can't be the man about town. Hmm. Well, sorry, folks, I hate to leave, but I got a broadcast in 15 minutes. Well, what a pity. So long. That's all right. I'll be back. I can hardly wait. Say, Miller, come here. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Miller, I want you to meet Mr. Larry Thomas, Jr. He's an old friend of mine. See that he gets a good table, will you? <laughs> I'll see you on the big watch, sir. Just two? If you please. This way, please. Hello, Ray Sugar. How about the coat and hat? Just a moment, please. Who did you say you wanted to speak to? Oh, Mr. Wilson. Why, yes, he's right here. It's for you, Mr. Wilson. Thanks. Hello, Al Wilson talking. What? Are you sure? Ray. Why, he's right here. I was just talking to him. Marvelous. How's you doing on the air tonight? <laughs> That's hot stuff. Thanks. Okay, you bet. Have a nice time. Say, do I ever miss? <laughs> you know, you're kind of cute with that, sugar. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'll be around to see you some more. Do that. Here you are. Oh, you well. Well, shut my mouth if it isn't old man Crane, son. <laughs> Smoke? No, but I'll keep it thanks. Uh, what's new? Well, you're the one who should tell me. Say, Al, not that it's any business of mine, but don't you ever get tired of writing the district attorney's office? News, isn't it? Good copy. Anytime the people have to put out their hard-earned dough for taxes and then get the runaround from those guys downtown, I'm going after them. Well, as a fair-minded member of the bar, I know that conditions are no worse in this town than in any other big city. Certainly not. But things won't improve till they find out who's getting the grab. And when I get the information... Oh, so you expect to get the information. <laughs> right again. And when I do, I'm going to play. Well, good luck, son. I hope you get it. <laughs> Working life in the heart. Hello. Good evening. Well, how's business? How's it fine? Well, how are the tips? The depression's still on. <laughs> That's what they all say. <laughs>
down again, Ralph. They refused his parole. So? Here, read this, Ralph. Read what they've got to say. They've turned him down again. What are you going to do now? Give me more lies? You're all worked up, Molly. There's nothing to get excited about. You call that nothing? Letting Fred sweat up there in the big house? It's nothing him doing eight years while you and Crane go free? That's nothing, eh? Well, it's something to me. And it's going to be something to you, Ross. It's going to be something to you. Molly, we're doing everything we can. Give us a chance. Take it easy. Take it easy. That's all I've done for five months. So have you, Ross. It was easy for you to tell Fred if he kept his mouth shut, if he took the rap, that you and Crane would have him out in 30 days. Huh. Crane drew pretty pictures for me about the fix he has at the district attorney's office with one of the assistants on his payroll. Almost floored me with how he stands with a governor and the strings he can pull with a parole board. But now... Don't I'm... be a sap, Molly. All your life, give us a chance. What chance did you give Fred for me? We made a bargain. I've lived up to my end. I've taken a job as a servant girl, a lady's maid, a cashier in a restaurant. I even posed as a title foreigner to tip you off so a haul could be made. What did I get for it? Promises and more promises. And now Fred's been parole can't come up again for six months. You're getting yourself all excited for nothing. I know that things have been running a little slow. I'll tell you what we'll do. Crane will be here in a half an hour. Come back then. You'll get everything straightened out. You know what's healthy for you? You'll get things fixed up. If you don't, I'm someone who can. Fred's coming out. Even if I have to trade you, Crane, and the whole mob to do it. and the rules of the contest will be announced later in the program. And now, the Wilbur Glass Company presents radio's favorite news commentator, Al Wilson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Lots of sizzling news tonight. So put out the cat, lock the door, don't let anyone dispute you and listen. Headline. It is rumored they expect something to fall down the chimney over to Walter Horton home. But the messenger is not Santa Claus. No, sir. <laughs> it's the story. Flash. Tomorrow morning's paper will carry the news of a big shake-up this afternoon at the district attorney's office. Did I say shake-up? Oh, more than an earthquake. It's about time something happened. In former times, the gambling houses in town closed their doors to the public. You had to be known to get in, but lately, thanks to our nearsighted, or perhaps the far-sighted officials, they have barkers and come-on men to pull you into a crooked roulette wheel or dice game. Maybe the new assistant, D.A., will take his job seriously, and I hope that's all he takes. Well, what's the matter, dear? Aren't you having fun? I'm bored to tears. Now, if you've seen enough of this, let's... We can't leave yet. The floor show's going on in two minutes. But I tell you, this is no place for a district attorney. Oh, do we have to go into that again? Darling, I don't start until tomorrow morning. But you could start by being dignified right now. Will you remind me to hate you later in life? Shall I tie a string around my finger? <laughs> no, my dove. Tie a string around your neck. <laughs>
boss wants to see you in the office, Mr. Crane. Oh, all right. Will you, uh, excuse me, Kitty? I'll be back in a minute. What? We won't worry about that. Oh, no? You would if your favorite Molly Fole just said. How can I? What did she say? It was about your getting Freddy's pro. Oh. But did she tell you how? Anyway, he's better up there for the present. She said if we don't, she's going downtown and do some talking. Well, that's nice. And where's that going to get her? Maybe the new man is the... Morning all over town for you. They're trying to get you all the afternoon. Well, it's happened. The new man in my place put me on the complaint desk. Well, what do you want me to do? But you've always promised you to. Take care of me in case anything happens. What about me? Oh, shut up, both of you. You act like... Who they put in your place? A fellow by the name of Thomas. Lawrence Thomas, Jr., a very well-known... Yes, I know. It's because of the First National Bank. He's liable to make it tough. A tougher guy than him. But what if Molly goes downtown and talks? She won't. <laughs> Two whiskeys and sodas, please. Yes, sir. Boy, that's a jazzy band. Wasn't that good? Not dancing, and I can't run fast enough to keep up with oh, I thought you did fairly well. So did you, especially when you decided to carry me around the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I had forgotten about that, but you learned. I hope not. Well, uh, excuse me. Oh, surely, dear. Surely, dear. Here's a dime. Make two phone calls. <laughs> you think I was never coming back? <laughs> well, uh, Joe wanted to say something. What happened? Did she fainted? I don't know. So I have to tell you that doesn't start until tomorrow morning. Let's go. We but don't you I... can't. Hi there, Mr. Thomas. Now we're getting somewhere. The district attorney's office not only prosecutes murders, but now they get to the scene before the crime happens. <laughs> yes, yes. I, uh, I was just about to take charge. I see. That's that. Well, dear, I guess we're hooked. Come on. Stand aside, stand aside here. Is she dead? Yes, she's dead. Now, nothing here is to be touched. Remember, we want everything left exactly as it is now. Make way. Make way. What do you know about this? Everything. That, that, that is, I, I'm sorry. I mean nothing. I'm Larry Thomas, Jr., the assistant district attorney. I'll take charge. Oh, I'll take you first. Now, uh, who did this? Uh, I, I mean, who found the body? No, that's wrong, isn't it? Well, skip it. Uh, officer, line everybody up for questions. Oh, that is quiet, 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 Suspect everyone. Suspect everybody? Well, come on, we'll suspect them together. Come on. What time did you get here this evening? About 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Spent the entire evening in the dining room? Yes, sir. Right. And uh, what are you doing here, please? I'm a lady, sir. Oh, I see. Pardon me. And uh, what time did you get here? Why, well, uh, well, I, I, I didn't... I, I didn't... Uh, All right, I'll see you later. Yes. And what are you doing? I... I was just going to start my nose. <laughs> Poor girl. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, she's dead. Larry Thomas is on the job. Larry, there's someone hiding in the phone booth. What? You in the telephone booth, whoever you are, keep your hands up. We've got... Come on out of there. Officer, open the door. Keep your hands up. Uh, it's you. Broadcasting again, huh? What a great help you are. District Attorney's office. Not yet, Mr. Harrison. Yes, I'll tell him the moment he comes in. Another call from Mr. Thomas? Yeah. If he doesn't show up soon, the old man will have apoplexy. A social line like him can't get in here early, even if there is a murder case pending. <laughs> District Attorney's Office. I'm sorry, madam. You'll have to take that up with the State Department of Labor. Yes. Time is 10.25. You're welcome. Hello? No, no, I won't talk to any reporters. I told you that. Tell him the district attorney's office has nothing to say for the present. Hello. Good morning. Hello, Pop. How are you? All right. Oh, Mr. Thomas. Yes? Well, what can I do for you, girlie? Mr. Harrison wants to see you in his office right away. He asked me to have you come in the moment you arrive. It's very urgent. Is he in there now? Yes, he's been waiting for you. Thanks. Good morning, Mr. Harrison. Have you seen that? <laughs> I was there. I know you are, and that's what I want to talk to you about. Too late now to tell you that places like the Dover Club are not generally visited by men of my staff. Last night's affair tells this more emphatically. Mr. Harrison, if I've embarrassed you or this office, I'm sorry. And if my resignation will help, you may have it. It's too late for that now. Tell me what you know about this affair. Well, there's no need of my saying that you fellows are in a tight spot. There's no excuse for such blunders. I don't know who did it or I don't care. But if you're not very careful and above all keep your mouths closed, someone is going to hang for it. Now do just as I say. As I said before, Mr. Harrison, any one of a number of people who were at the Dover Club last night might have committed this kind of a crime. I saw that the minute I looked over the guest. I am aware of that. But until we can identify the murdered woman, we cannot hope to find a motive for this crime. One thing I promise, if I have to turn the city upside down, I'll have the murder before I'm through. Unfortunately, Thomas, we're working against time. Your presence at the cafe last night makes this entirely a matter for this office to clean up, and in a hurry. Well, I'm thoroughly aware of the responsibility I've placed upon this office. Under these circumstances, Regardless of your inexperience, I'm compelled to place this entire matter in your care. Thomas, the vindication of yourself, the reputation of this office are in your hands. While I can't say that I am entirely in sympathy with your position in this affair, I promise you every cooperation. Thank you very much, Mr. Harrison. Tough luck, old boy. Well, that's all right. Thanks, Hill. If I had no idea who did it, it might be a lot tougher. You have an idea? Uh, uh, tell me. Maybe I can help you. Uh, no, it's still a little vague, but... Uh, well, I promise you'll be the first to know if things shape up. Well, thanks. Thank you. Oh, hello, dear. Sit down and I'll let you in on some trouble. Anything exciting happen? Oh, no, no, dear, nothing. The newspapers are pounding my head off. Wilson is treating me as if I were public enemy number one, and 
Well, the boss has just congratulated me on the magnificent muddle I've made of affairs. And outside of that, nothing has happened. Got any ideas? Yes, some very definite ones. I found out that this fellow Ross, who runs the Dover Club, is the head of a very tough gang. I found that out. One of the boys on the city staff told me they've been trying for years to get Ross, but he has too much influence. Influence or no influence, I'm going to arrest the fellow tonight. But you can't. You have no proof that he was even remotely connected with that affair. And you can't accuse a man of murder until you know who was murdered. Well, maybe a couple of days in jail where the beds aren't so soft and the food isn't so good might make him talk. But you have no charge. <laughs> well, uh, gambling isn't exactly a legal business. And besides, the way they run things at the Dover Club, I'd call it robbery, wouldn't you? Anyhow, we're going to find out tonight. Six minutes overdue now. Maybe we should go out ourselves. No, we'll wait for the signal. So you see, Inspector, the uh, district attorney evidently was in some other club last night. My client's gaming casino hasn't been open since he took over the place six weeks ago. All right, come on. Okay. I can't understand this, Kit. Somebody must have tipped them off. Maybe we didn't see gambling there last night. Yeah, maybe we're both crazy. Why don't you speak for yourself, mister? What? <laughs> well, folks, two weeks have passed, and we're no nearer the solution of the mysterious cafe murder than the night it happened. Is it possible that no one could identify the beautiful woman? Or perhaps some of our officials, <laughs> you know whom I mean, will be richer if they drop the whole thing. I think the DA's office needs only a few more on their staff, like those they have. Then perhaps every decent citizen in town will be killed with the best murderer, the only one to survive. So long, folks. This is Al Wilson, signing off till 10 o'clock tomorrow. Then we will have more hot news. Good afternoon. Shut that thing off. Yes, sir. Mr. Harrison, I don't understand it. Everything I do, every move I make seems to be known. Are you sure that your plans have been kept secret, that no one knows? Nobody except, well, the people in this office. What about that girl? Oh, you mean Kit? She's a newspaper woman, isn't she? Oh, yes, but, well, she's as deeply interested in this thing as I am. Is Mr. Thomas in? He's busy with Mr. Harrison right now. Oh. You may wait in his office if you care to. Thank you. If we only knew who she was, Mr. Harrison, <laughs> and if we could find out how it's possible for a bullet to pass through a woman's chest while she's talking on the telephone in a booth that's hardly large enough for two people, I think, well, I, I think our problem would be solved. There, there, my boy. Keep on working. I, too, am sure it was one of the Ross mob. But with their influence and the way they pay off, it'll take strong evidence to convict him. Well, we can only go on hoping and not let anything get by us. Hello. Oh, you frightened me. Say, Kit, do you notice anything strange about me? I mean, am I standing up or sitting down? I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I've been knocked around so much this last week. Oh, don't be silly. Come here. I want to show you something. Do you recognize that picture? No, I don't. Oh, you wouldn't. Men can never see any further than their noses. And pug noses are that. Now, don't be personal. Now, watch. Hey, Joe, Kit. That's the woman that was murdered. Uh-huh. The fog is beginning to lift. That's Molly Cole. 
Molly Cole. Where did you get it? I've been hunting through the files of the office for over two weeks, and that's not all. Look at this. Well, what's this? Fred Cole, age 34, height 61, prison term for robbery, wife, Molly Cook. Why, Joe Kip, you've got it. But that still only tells us who the woman is. Well, it tells much more than that, don't you understand? What? Well, Fred Cole has a solution to this mystery. <laughs> but he was in prison at but the time. Prisoners get information. You know about the grapevine. May I come in and join the festivities? Oh, welcome. We've got some important new evidence. I promised you'd be the first to know. Congratulations. Well, congratulate Kit. Uh, Miss Van Buren, I mean. She dug it up. Hill, I'm going up to the penitentiary to talk with a fellow named Cole. In the meantime, have Ross and his entire gang shadowed every minute. We'll have enough evidence when I get back, I promise you. Oh, uh, if you take my advice, Miss Van Buren, you keep this out of the papers for the present. Oh, yes, Kit, please. Keep it quiet, dear. Uh, good luck. Thanks. See you when I get back. District Attorney's Office. I'm sorry, Mr. Harrison is busy on another line. Who? Oh, just a moment. I'll cut in. Oh, Mr. Harrison. I'll catch the first train I can, dear. I want to see Cole as soon as possible. May I go with you? No, dear, but I'll drop you at the office. And now, to keep it quiet, won't you? Don't print anything about it. Oh, Mr. Harrison, I'm I want to... I'm sorry, Thomas, but not now. I'm on my way to police headquarters. But I wanted to talk I'll to you about... I'll see you when I get back. There's been a prison break. A dangerous criminal by the name of Cole and two other prisoners have escaped. We'll have to defer that other matter until I return. Cole escaped? I've got it, kid. If Cole has escaped, it'll take him two hours to get here, and when he arrives, I'll be waiting for him. You're no mind reader. Where do you expect to find him? Naturally, where he'd go to avenge the murder of his wife, Ross's office. I'll wait there. Oh, Larry, you might get hurt. Oh, not a chance, monkey. Don't be silly. Oh, be careful, Larry. Please be careful. Say, listen, the sample was great. Hello. Is the boss in? I don't know. Thanks. Not there. Well, tell him to phone the cafe the minute he comes in. It's very important. Listen, Ross. I'm going to... Hill! You rat. You're the one that's been tipping him off to every move I was making. You belong to this mob. No, you don't I understand. I you're wrong, all right. I thought you were with us. You're a member of this gang. I can explain. I'll let you explain. You can explain everything to a jury. And now that I let you know where we... enough about this gang to send them all to the penitentiary and I'm going to make you tell it to me. I don't know. I'll give you until tomorrow morning to bring me the name of the man that killed Molly Cole and enough information to send this gang up or you'll swing for the crime yourself. Remember, I come clean with me. Give me what I want or you know what will happen. And don't try to get away. I'll get you if I have to go around the world. You know that, don't you? Are you sure the DA said he wouldn't be back this afternoon? Yes, Mr. Thomas. He took the afternoon train for a meeting on the parole board. It's that prison break, I believe. Well, oh, he's gone up to the prison. Yes, sir. What's this about a fight? Who was it? Thomas. And this time we're in a jam. He got wise that it was Molly Cole who was bumped off. And it's connected the whole thing up with Fred. How much does he know? I don't know. It's all very strange. He said he wanted to talk to Fred in prison. Instead, he must have followed me here, because he came in and started slamming me around. 
What'd he say? Plenty. Said if I didn't tell all I knew by tomorrow morning, he'd swing me for the job. Did you tell him? Certainly not. Now, what are we going to do? Something happened to Thomas. What? For instance, an accident. One bad enough to make him forget all the information he has. It would solve our problem. I don't get you. I didn't think you would. It's very simple. Thomas meets with an accident. And Hill is the accident. Not me. The accident would be the other way around. You don't understand either. He wants you to give up what you know, doesn't he? Yeah. Do you want to? And go to jail? I do not. Well, phone him. Tell him you'll meet him tonight at the Hotel Hunter. Tell him to be alone and you'll give him enough information to blow this town wide open. Then when he gets there, we'll do the rest. Hello. Yes, this is Larry Thomas, Jr. speaking. Oh, hello, Hill. Yes, sure, I'll meet. Yes. Hunter Hotel. Yeah. Don't tell anybody. If they should find out, they'd do anything to prevent my getting there. No, I'll be alone, I promise. Okay. Goodbye. Oh, it's eight thirty. I'm five minutes overdue. I generally hold a four spade bid once every hour. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, in just one hour, exactly at 9.30, the big floor show will go on. In the meantime, let's dance. Thank you. Keep on walking, Rock. Cold. Yes, cold. And if you as much as that your eyes, you will check out right here. What's the idea of the eye? Fred, you've got nothing on me. We'll go in your office and find out, Mr. Lady Killer. Keep on moving, just like nothing happened. Sit down. I'm here to kill you, Joe. Kill you like you killed my wife. Don't shoot, Fred. You can't without giving me a chance. What chance did you give Molly? Don't kill you, huh? You knocked off the only person I ever loved. I cut off both my arms if I could only get her back. But I can't. Just the same, I can see the guy that did it go with her. I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't do it. Honest, I didn't. Honest? You stopped being honest when you were two years old. 
You didn't kill her? Who did? It was Hill. That's who it was. Off the hill of the district attorney's office. He wanted to leave you up there and double cross a whole lot of it. He killed her because Molly knew too much about him. That's it. You lie. You're a dirty liar! I know you're blaming Hill. And I know you just had Hill bump off. No, that won't do, Ross. And if that's all you've got to say... All right. I'll tell you. It was Crane. Arnold Crane. He was the one that killed her. That's how my wife read. Boom, Crane. Get him over here. But I don't know. Yes, you do. Snap into it. Don't tip him off. Just tell him he's got to come right now. Hello. I want to talk to Arnold Crane. He's upstairs playing cards. Take it easy. Call me, Mr. Crane. I'll be through in a minute. If he gets wise and don't show up, it's curtains for you. Yes? Hello, Arnold. This is Joe talking. I want to see you. You can move right away. Yes. It's all right. All right, I'll be right over. Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I'm afraid I'll have to leave. This law business is worse than being a doctor. Oh, I don't know about that. I feel I'm still in time. I expect to call any minute myself. <laughs> well, shall we uh, settle up? Yeah, well. <laughs> Hi there, Tom. What's the idea of passing me by without saying hello? Well, hello. Well, I have the new heavyweight champion from the DA's office. All right. I understand you had a fight with Hill. What's the detail? Give me some news. Nothing to it. Well, I'm certainly not getting any information here. Maybe I haven't got any to give. So long. Son, where is room 214? Right down the hall, sir. Thanks. What's the idea, Hill? Turn on the lights. I'm alone. Hill. Hill, what happened? Miller did it. I was going to double cross you. And they double-crossed me. They were afraid I'd tell that Craig and killed Molly Cole. There's a miller he gets. Hill, what happened? Hope you don't mind me crashing the party, but I don't want to miss the fun. Hello, what's this? Champ knocks out Hill again. Why, he's dead. Yes. When I came in... It looks bad, Thomas. You better give me the story now and save yourself. Listen, I came here to see Hill about that racket those fellas are buzzing around with. What's happening here? We were tipped off by telephone. 
So was I. It's a good thing you men came. You can arrest this man here for the murder of Arthur. Hey, you... hey. Attention all cars, broadcast 51. Pick up Lawrence Thomas Jr., age 26, height 6 feet 1, gray eye. I'll get in touch with you later. Goodbye. Information just received. Lawrence Thomas now at Dover Club. Calling headquarter cars. All headquarter cars. Proceed to Dover Club. Pick up Lawrence Thomas Jr. One of a questioning Hotel Hunter murder. Reserve men to Dover Club pick on Thomas. Station 63 and 64, keep the wires open. Oh, Larry, I've looked... Oh. You're just about... 
about to hear a cute little story, dear. You two boys wait out here. Come on, Bradford, we'll go inside. Come on, pick him up. Sorry, sir, but Thomas is not in this room. We're holding these two in case. Well, this is almost as good. The warden is looking for Mr. Cole here, and we've probably saved ourselves another murder case. Search these two. Thomas is somewhere on the premises. We've got it well covered. This fellow came as far as the door and tried to sneak away. I thought you might want to talk to him. Oh, good evening, Inspector. This sort of thing is a little out of my line. I was sent for to have a talk with a prospective client, but... Uh, well, if you don't mind, I'll go. I wouldn't handle this kind of a case. I understand, Mr. Crane. It does look like a nasty mess, and I have no reason to detain you. Well, good evening, Inspector. It's about time somebody did something to clean up these places. Good night, Mr. Crane. That's swell, Inspector. And while you've got his hand, you might as well slip on the handcuffs. Handcuffs? And you'll have the man who killed Molly Cole. The man who ordered Miller here to get Hill out of the way. Keep an eye on him, Chief. It's a case of dog-eat-dog -dog with this crowd. Crane here and Ross. Cole goes to the penitentiary under a sentence of eight years for a crime they were all in on. Crane promised to get him out in three months with all his influence. And Hill, who was on his payroll, would help. Molly Cole knew she was being double-crossed and came here for a showdown. Decided to tell everything to the authorities, and just as she was about to telephone, Mr. Crane, who realizes he's facing a jail sentence... When the music blasted to cover the noise of the shot, Crane killed Molly Cole. After my encounter here this afternoon with Hill, Crane realized they were finished. No longer trusting him, he decided to kill two birds with one stone, get Hill out of the way, and frame me as the murderer. And how'd you find all this out? Hill lived just long enough to tell me. With him gone, I knew I had to work fast to catch this mob. I suppose the complaints will pass through the DA's office. They'll be signed in my office in the morning. I'm very glad, not only for your sake, Thomas, but for every city employee, that you were able to clear this matter up. Thanks, Inspector. That's fine. Another day, another dollar. Come on, sweetheart. We're going places. Oh, Larry. Now, wait a minute, dear. I know it's leap year, but I'll do the proposing. Kit, will you marry me? I don't like district attorney. But after tomorrow morning, I'll be the junior member of Thomas and Thomas. Very. <laughs> uh. <laughs>